Hey guys, welcome back to SourceFed. This episode is brought to you by Domain.com. A 16-year-old girl in Michigan managed to fake having triplets to her friends and family, including the father. Now she did this by using only $149 in props from a website called fakeababy.com. The scheme went on for 10 months, all thanks to the website. Not only did she fool her peers aesthetically, she also fooled them into giving her thousands of dollars worth of gifts. It was reported that she had so many prizes she couldn't open them all. On the website, they sell fake bellies as well as a bunch of other faux things like ultrasounds. Luckily, a Facebook user and a group from others of triplets realized they weren't real. No one called her out on it for the first time. 10 months when one of the mothers in the group pointed out that the photos were from fakeababy.com. She was able to tell because all the photos she posted were of babies in the same position. She wasn't found out as faking it until the day before her scheduled C-section. When she was confronted, she broke down and informed detectives that she had lost her baby at six weeks, but for some reason still went on with the charade. She's still yet to make a statement, but her unidentified brother claims that all the donations she took are being returned. Hey, next time your teacher or boss catches you taking a nap, be sure to tell him that you're saving your own life. A new study shows that taking a nap during the day lowers blood pressure and reduces is the need for anti-hypersensitive medications. Yeah, but you start allowing midday naps in the US and people are just gonna abuse it. Too many people use the, oh, I'm late to work because my alarm didn't go off excuse. That's not gonna work during the day. Now, of course, you know that there are places in the world that even go so far as to enforce the rule of daytime sleepings. In Spain, it's called a siesta. Some businesses will close for hours to accommodate this resting time. China and Italy do the same, so why not us? Well, Google is actually a nap-friendly business, believing that midday naps increases productivity. Of course, this also means working later hours, though. Naps feel the best when you have have seven million better things to do. I call those turbo naps because they waste a bunch of time. Well, at least we don't have to clock in and out when we use the toilet. Remember kids, the best way to beat the system is to take frequent bathroom breaks. This study has a long way to go to prove even more health benefits to napping during the day, but for now, the next best thing is just to get more sleep at night. The more the better, kids. But what about my late night dates with beautiful women, Steve? I know for a fact that none of that is true, Will. You'll be fine. Speaking of handsome men like myself, British actor Idris Elba was recently under speculation to be the eighth actor to play James Bond, replacing Daniel Craig. That'd be cool, but one of the authors of the ongoing James Bond novels, Anthony Horowitz, doesn't think he would accurately portray the character. He stated, quote, For me, Idris Elba is a bit too rough to play the part. It's not a color issue. I think he's probably a bit too street for Bond. Is it a question of being suave? Yeah. Oh, okay, I know a lot of people want to scream racism, but I don't think British people can be racist. Britain abolished slavery in 1808. America didn't abolish it until 1865. That's 57 more years of legal racism. But then again, in my head, every British person is either Ricky Gervais or Emma Watson, so I can't be mad at them. What about the other actors that are in every Harry Potter movie? A lot of people are unaware that for the first three Potter films, Harry was played by Ricky Gervais. That's untrue. Will, I think you're broken again. Idris Elba is too black to be James Bond. Accidental racism, accidental racism, accidental Ra ra racism, accidental racism, accidental. Russia's opened a lab in Siberia that's devoted to the study of extinct animal DNA in hopes of creating clones. Isn't this kind of the premise to Jurassic Park? Guys, the 90s are over. We need to move on. Still don't have real dinosaurs, Will. According to the director of the Mammoth Museum in Yakutsk, the team will seek out live cells with a view to cloning. Guys, we're paving the way to the future right now. We have watches that are cell phones, cars that pump gas themselves. Now we just need pet dodo birds. The director went on to state the priority is to look into bringing back the mammoth. Why, why do we need to bring back the mammoth? We don't even have enough places to keep a mammoth. The world is getting warmer. I'm not trying to see a mammoth on an iceberg like those poor polar bears. See how sad this is? I can already see the animated movies that'll come out of this when they bring back the mammoth. Finding mammoth. Mammoth story. Puss in mammoth boots. Mammoth 2, return to earth. And even my favorite, mammoth babies. It'll be so cute. Also earlier this year, Harvard University announced they had copied 14 woolly mammoth genes into the genome of an Asian elephant. Now this all came about from that 39,000 year old, very well preserved baby mammoth that scientists discovered and put on display at the Mammoth Museum in Yakut. Scientists at the facility hope their own unrivaled collection of 2,000 or so remnants of prehistoric animals ranging from prehistoric dogs to horses and mammoths will assist them in identifying quality cells to extract useful DNA. Okay, why are we trying so hard to bring back the mammoth? Can we at least bring back an animal that does something for us? There's gotta be an extinct animal that prints money and eats races. All right, whatever happens, Russia is super stoked about the whole thing, but concerned that the priority of the lab should be to save animals currently alive from going extinct rather than bringing back already extinct animals. That makes sense, but I mean, who doesn't want a woolly mammoth pet? Who, I ask? Oh, me. Imagine the poops that thing would make. I'm not cleaning that. Okay, thanks for the segue to the next story, Will. A man who was suffering from constipation for over 10 years had an 11 pound poop removed from his body. 11 pounds. Here's a quick list of things that we put together that weigh 11 pounds. A bag of potatoes. A six foot aluminum stepladder. An adult Maltese dog. This. 
That's a gaseous state, weighing only 11 grams. A medium-sized bowling ball. The man, who's 27 years old, underwent surgery to remove the massive poo from his colon. Now, come on, dude. You know how that thing removed from your colon via surgery? Women birth 8 to 11 pound babies per day. After a series of x-rays, doctors in Chengdu, China, noticed that the man's heart had shifted to the right because his colon had swelled twice its normal size. The doctors then diagnosed him with congenital megacolon. Megacolon? You gotta be kidding me. That's a medical term? Sounds like a Teen Titans villain. Isn't that the shit that kills the minions? Megacolon can apparently cause paralysis of bowel movements and fecal tumors. Wow, that is worse than anything Slade can do. The man went in for stomach pain and came out 11 pounds lighter and is recovering currently in a hospital in China. That had to feel so good. I can't even imagine. And hey, if you guys want to start a website about science facts about poop, you can. Just go to domain.com, the perfect place for all your web hosting needs. Domain is easy to use and is affordable, and you don't have to use .com at the end of your web address. You can use stuff like .space or .myc. And there's tons more to choose from, so go to domain.com and save 20% off web hosting and domains by using the coupon code SOURCEFED at checkout. I love you. I'm Steve Zaragoza. And I'm William Haynes. Do you really love him, Will? Of course. I deserve a Grammy for acting like I haven't been smelling your fart this whole time. My Grammy died last year. Oh, want me to make a new show, huh? Want me to make a whole new channel and do all these things, all right? Well, I got something to say to all these people. Can I do it? Well, they did it in a Petri dish, which is like a regular dish, but for virgins.